Hey, good morning and happy Christmas 2016. I figured I would put together this video this morning in case you found an Uno or a Mega or any other type of Arduino underneath your Christmas tree. And if you did, consider yourself lucky because you're introduced to a whole new world of fun. So, I thought we'd start by taking a look at some of the different boards, the most common boards that you might find, and uh, kind of compare and contrast them. So we're going to start out with this one right here. And this is the Arduino Uno uh, Revision 3. Now this one is uh, made by Sun Founders, you see. So it is one of the clone boards and there are many of them out there and there is nothing wrong with that because this whole Arduino program is all about being open sourced and available for everybody. So let's take a look here at the Uno and talk about a little bit about the main microcontroller which is the Atmel ATmega 328P. It runs at 16 megahertz and this is basically a 5 volt board. Now you can put in this barrel jack here. Uh, this is a 2.1 millimeter center positive barrel jack from 7 to 12 volts. And this little voltage regulator right here will knock it down to what's needed, the 3.3 .3 volts to run the microcontroller and the 5 volts. Now your Arduino has, well the Uno has 6 analog inputs okay it has 14 digital outputs of those six of them and those are the ones that are marked with the little squiggles are available for PWM or pulse width modulation which is a digital approximation of an analog output it has uh, 1k of EEPROM 2K of SD RAM, 32K of flash. It has a USB B connector, which is uh, if you have a printer or you're quite familiar with that connector, I'm sure, and a single UART. Now, this is probably the most common board there is the Arduino Uno. Now, one of my favorites is the Nano. Well, let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see the Nano better. Now this Nano, this is the uh, Revision 2 Nano, I believe, has the same microcontroller. This is just the surface mount version of the Atmel ATmega 328P. It also runs um, 5 volts to the pins, 3.3 volts to the microcontroller, and it can take 7 to 9 volts in on this V in pin right here. And if we flip her over, one of the things that makes it a little bit different from the uh, Uno is the serial to USB chip. This is the CH340 chip. The UNOs use the FTDI. So you might have to download a driver if your computer doesn't pick that up. Now, your Nano also runs at 16 megahertz. And it has eight A0 to A7 analog inputs. It has four 14 digital pins, six of which can be used as PWM. It has 1K of EEPROM, it has 2K of SRAM, it has 32K of flash. This uses the USB mini connector. So basically this is pretty much the same as your Uno, but let me zoom out here a little bit. Of 
quite a size difference. But this has the same functionality. The only thing, the only real difference is uh, this doesn't have the barrel input jack. All right. Next, we have the Mega. Let's zoom in a little bit on the Mega. Now the, oop, I may have zoomed in a little bit too far there. Sorry about that. The Mega uses a different microcontroller chip. There's some schmutz on that one. I don't know if you can read that, but that is the Atmel 2560 chip. Now, like the Uno, it has the barrel jack, the 2.1 millimeter, and the USB-B connector. 5 volts to the pins, also the 3.3 volt. Uh, for the microcontroller, it can take the 7 to 12 volt input. It also runs at 16 megahertz. Now, we have, on this baby, 16 analog pins. We have... 54 digital pins and of those 54 digital pins 15 of them are PWM pins now that's pretty cool it has 4k EEPROM 8k of SRAM 256k of flash the USB B and four UARTs so the difference between this and your basic Uno, I mean, it's a little bit longer, but when you look at the pin counts, that's where you're really going to see the difference. This is the, uh, the board that you want to use if you're using something that has a whole lot of input output going on, all right? Now there are lots of other Uno, um, Arduino boards. Um, there's the Micro, the Pro Micro, uh, the Yun, the Explora. Uh, tons and tons. And then there are Arduino compatible boards. And I'm going to show you one of them right here. This guy right here is the Feather M0. This is the Wi-Fi version. They also have a Bluetooth version and a data logging version. This is available from an American company called Adafruit. And it uses an entirely different processor. Also from Atmel though, this is the AT Sam D21. This is an ARM Cortex processor. Uh, very fast. 48 megahertz. It has 10 analog inputs, 10 digital inputs, 8 PWM compatible pins. Again, you can see the squiggles beside them. Now, this, this board has no EEPROM. It does have 32K of SRAM and 256K of flash. Now, if we zoom out here just a little bit and lay it next to the Nano, you can see that those boards are physically about the same size. But memory-wise, the closest thing is that Mega with the 256K of flash. Now, where this board outshines the Mega and the others is, of course, this board has built-in Wi-Fi, and you can see right here, 802.11, B, G, and N. There's your Wi-Fi antenna right there. This board also has a little uh, jack for a LiPo battery, and it has the uh, charging circuitry built-in. It's also got two built-in LEDs. There's one built for um, 
the built-in for D13. There's one for charge. Very nice little unit. Now, give me one second to grab a breadboard. I'll be right back. Okay. I wasn't gone too long. My arms just aren't long enough to reach all the way over to the desk. So this is a little mini breadboard, but you're going to get the idea because these breadboards all have the 0.1 inch spacing. So if we take a look at this Mega, and the Uno is the same way, I don't want to say they're not breadboard friendly, because they are, but you'll have to use jumper wires. You'll have to, you know, put in a wire from here to there. Not that you're not going to have to do that with anything else anyway. But the Nano and that feather are breadboard friendly in the sense that you can just plug them directly into a breadboard. Well, once you solder on those headers, you can plug them into a breadboard like that. I'm just going to stick this one on the side here. And see, that makes them very convenient for use. Now, the one disadvantage of these really small form factor things is shields. While there are some wings, which are what Adafruit calls the shields for their feathers available, you're going to find much more available for the Uno. And the Uno is supposedly, or the Mega is supposedly shield compatible with the, the, the UNO. So, most shields that work for the UNO should also work for the Nano. I mean, for the Mega. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, shields, shields are a plug-in board that would fit on top, make the connections to the pins automatically for you. And they, they have different shields, such as a Wi-Fi shield, a Bluetooth shield, SD card shield, um, LCD shield. Basically, it just knocks out a step of you wiring it up, and it makes things really simple to learn. So that's my Christmas morning introduction to the various Arduino boards. Wish you and yours a Merry Christmas from me and mine.